Hey, hello, and welcome to this episode of Learn Everyday English, your roadway to English proficiency. Hey, glad to have you with me today. If you like these videos, one, hit the like button, two, subscribe, three, hit the bell for notifications so you know when I upload a new video, and four, tell your friends about it so that they can benefit and improve their English too. So I hope you enjoy these videos and I do this as a labor of love, we say in English. Um, I do not make any money off of this. I'm retired. I'm a retired engineer. If you didn't know, I worked for the city um, of Houston for 30 years. I was lucky enough to retire about five years ago, and I'm also a language learner just like you. I'm studying Spanish for about three years now, so I know it's it's not easy to learn a new language, to learn a foreign language, so I just want to kind of give back to other people. Now that I, I have the time to spend and devote to make these videos, um, we're going to be talking about something that's interesting today. It has to do a little bit maybe with pronunciation. Uh, that's one of the things I hear from people and students is I ask them, hey, what's the most difficult thing that you find about learning English? And uh, most people say it's the pronunciation. And I know English has a lot of rules uh, regarding pronunciation, or sometimes the rules don't seem to make any sense. And I know it can be very difficult. But before I get started and jump right in to today's episode, I want to just remind you, we do have a podcast that you can listen to, a Learn Everyday English podcast. You can go to Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, any of the major uh, podcast applications, and just uh, type in Learn Everyday English. And we put out a new podcast uh, once a week, every Monday. I think we're on episode 22 now. So if you haven't uh, listened to those, be sure and check those out, as we say in English. That means to go ahead and, and listen to them and see what you think. I've gotten a lot of good reviews, a lot of good comments. Um, I've had people from all over the world actually download the podcast. I think we're have people from over 60 countries that have downloaded the podcast and listened to it. And I've seen the, uh, in, the interest in the podcast increase, we say exponentially, so more and more people every month seem to be finding out about the podcast and downloading them. And I want to say, as a language learner, for me personally, I think the most important things when you're trying to learn a new language is listening is to me is one of the key things or key components or the keys or the key to uh, in learning a new language as well as speaking and of course reading, reading a book or magazines. But I think listening is key because you have to get to the point where your brain hears say a word or phrase in a new language and it automatically knows what that means and you can I guess stop trying to translate in your head from one language your native language to the new language and that just takes time and you just have to put in the time and effort and like I say all the time you have to be consistent and you have to be persistent so it helps to study and practice a little bit every day rather than saying a lot one time every three, four days. Do a little bit, even if it's 20, 30 minutes every day. So check those podcasts out, Learn Everyday English. And you can also check out the Learn Everyday English webpage at www.learneverydayenglish.com. You can uh, find the podcast there, listen to them from the web page, and they'll give you some other information. And the podcasts also have the program notes that go along with each podcast episode. You can download them. If you go to the Learn Everyday English uh, web page, there's a, a special page and a link to the podcast resources page 
where you can download notes that go along with each podcast and you can follow along. So I'm going to jump right in and without further ado, which means without further delay or without waiting anymore, I know I kind of rambled on, we say in English, which means to kind of talk and talk a little bit too much, but I think there it was some in, uh, information that was beneficial to you. But today we're going to be talking about a topic or subject that was recommended to me by a viewer of the YouTube channel and he had a question about the word or the letters TH in English maybe pronounced th, th, t. So it's kind of can be kind of confusing and his specific question was uh, the pronunciation of TH, the two letters together, TH when they are surrounded by other letters, specifically the letters M as in Mary, N as in Nancy, S as in Sam, and Z as in Zebra. So the letters TH when they are surrounded by M, N, S, and Z. So I looked this up. It was an interesting question and as an English speaker. It's, you know, something I don't normally think about because in our uh, home language or native language a lot of times we don't really think about um, these types of things it, it just comes naturally to us we just know them you know maybe has somebody asked you if they're trying to learn your language well why do you do it that way why do you say it that way and you your answer is hmm I don't know I never thought about that that's just the way it is. That's, that's how we do it. We don't have to think about it. So I thought about this, and there's really not a lot of combinations where we have TH directly followed by the letters M, N, S, and Z that either become, that come before the combination of TH or after TH. But there are also a lot of combinations where we have M, N, S, and Z, and then another letter, and then TH. So I went, to what I did, I went to the English dictionary and tried to find uh, these combinations. So I did find, I think, 12 words where I, I found the combination of TH with either M, N, S, or Z right before the TH or right after the TH. So I'm going to go over these 12 words with you, um, pronounce them for you, and then use them in a sentence so that you'll know um, how they're supposed to be pronounced and used, and also give you a definition of what the word is. So the first word is anthem, anthem, and use this as a one listening comprehension video, but also use this as a pronunciation video so pronounce or repeat or say the words after me or you can read the uh, sentences after me so the first word is anthem anthem a-n-t-h-e-m anthem and an anthem is a song which is used to represent a particular nation society or group so your country has a national anthem, anthem, but the n this word has a n t h e m. So the combination of n t h is in the word, but it's pronounced anthem, anthem, anthem. So the t h is a th, anth, th sound, anthem, anthem, anthem. So I can give you an example sentence: is the national anthem is sung at the beginning of every football game. The national anthem is sung at the beginning of every football game. So to, to make this sound, it's the tongue, we say, is placed between the teeth slightly. The, and make the, and the, thumb, thumb, thumb. Almost like, almost like your thumb, anthem 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 the 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 sound 
The next word is interesting because it is one word, but you can maybe, in essence, maybe say break it up into two words, but the word is anthill, anthill. So it's a, a hill, a small hill you might find in a garden, in a yard, where the ants build a hill and the ants, I guess, live underground below the hill. So we call that an anthill. But this is different because it's the A-N-T-H-I-L-L. -L. So it's almost like two words, ant, A-N-T-H-I-L-L, -L, but it's all one word. So the N-T-H are all together. So this is a little bit different, but it's ant hill, ant hill. And it is a nest in the form of a mound built by ants or another type of insect called a termite. And termites like to eat wood. So you might want to look that up on the internet if you don't know what a termite is. An example sentence is this. There are many anthills in our backyard. There are many anthills in our backyard. Sometimes we say our backyard, but our backyard. So that's anthill. So the TH sound in this word is, is different than anthem. It says ant hill, so it's almost like t ant hill. There's this two kind of separate sounds. The next word is asthma. Asthma, and this is kind of different, and this is why English is so confusing. But asthma is spelled A S T H M A. A S T H M A. And asthma is a condition, a health condition in which or where a person's airways, we say your airways, the passages, the ways that allow you to breathe, like your, your throat, your lungs, become inflamed, inflamed. They narrow, or we say become smaller, or, and they swell. The airway becomes smaller because the area around it swells and produces extra mucus, which makes it difficult to breathe. You might just want to look up mucus. Mucus is a kind of secretion or substance that your body produces when it is attacked by, say, microorganisms or some bacteria that is harmful to the body. It's kind of a um, sticky, slimy substance that's used to protect the lining of your internal organs. So that's asthma. But as you can see, this has a totally different sound, the S-T-H sound. It's asthma. So the T in this word is really silent. It's almost like A-S-M-A, -A, asthma. It's not asthma, asthma, or asthma. No, it's asthma, asthma. So repeat that, asthma. He has like asthma, or an example. My son has to be careful when exercising because he has asthma. My son has to be careful when exercising because he has asthma. And asthma is a condition where people have trouble breathing. They might sound like this. <sighs> they, they can't get air into their lungs. They can't breathe normally. So that's asthma. So interesting, the first word was anthem. Thum, anthem, the th sound, but this is asthma, where the T is not pronounced, or you cannot hear the T, it's silent. The fourth word is ester, ester, E-S-T-H-E-R, and this is a woman's name. It's not a very common woman's name, but it is a woman's name, and it's spelled, like I said, E-S-T-H-E-R, and it's pronounced Esther. So this is even more confusing, right, in English, because here we have the letters S-T-H all together, we say, and the T is pronounced, and it's all, almost like the H is silent, right? Esther. It's not Esther, 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 no, it's Esther, so the H is silent. So that's really weird. We have anthem, the TH is pronounced, asthma, where the TH is not pronounced, and we have ester, 
where the T is pronounced, the S is pronounced, but the H is silent. So that's very confusing. And I can give you an example sentence. My brother is dating a woman named Esther. My brother is dating, or we say maybe say going out with, or seeing a woman named Esther. So this is really why English can be so confusing. You just have to know this. There's no real rules that you can learn or follow to understand this. The next word is ethnic, ethnic, and it means of or relating to large groups of people or people class, classes, according to common racial, national, tribal, religious, linguistic, which means like language oriented, or cultural origin or background, ethnic, ethnic. So that's E-T-H-N-I-C, ethnic. So here the T-H is pronounced like you would think it would be pronounced th, with a th sound, eth, ethnic, ethnic, ethnic ethnic. So when you pronounce words and you're practicing them, we say exaggerate or over exaggerate, make your mouth more exaggerated uh, than you would normally uh, speak. So ethnic, ethnic. An example sentence is this. The United States has a large number of ethnic groups. The United States has a large number of ethnic groups, like there could be Native American Indians in the United States or people from other ethnic groups. So that's ethnic, ethnic. The next word is labyrinth, labyrinth, L-A-B-Y-R-I-N-T-H. And here the TH is pronounced and the N, labyrinth, labyrinth. See that th at the end, th, labyrinth, labyrinth. And a labyrinth is a simple definition if you know what a maze is, M-A-Z-E. A labyrinth is like a maze. But the definition is an intricate combination of paths or passages in which it is difficult to find one's way or to reach the exit, where you can't, you're trying to walk through an area of paths and you can't find your way out. We say that is called a labyrinth or a maze, M-A-Z-E. So look that up. That's some of your homework. Look up what a maze is, or you may need to look up labyrinth. Here's a definition of labyrinth. Trying to find my way out of the stadium was like a labyrinth. Trying to find my way out of the stadium, because there were so many passages or ways to get out, it was like a labyrinth. It was like a maze. But here is labyrinth. Th, labyrinth. So this is more of the common TH sound. The next word is a very common word, which you, I'm sure, already know. It's month, month, M-O-N-T-H, like a month in the year, like January is the first month. February is the second month of the year. But hear how you, the sound is month, th, that's, it's a th at the end, month. There's an N-T-H, month, so the N is n, n t month, but it's combined, month. So a month is a period of about four weeks, especially one of the 12 periods into which a year is divided. Here's an example sentence. A year is made up of 12 months, or I can say a year is composed of 12 months, or a year has 12 months. But we, a lot of times we say is made up of 12 months. So that's month, month, month. The next word is a ninth, N-I-N-T-H, ninth. You probably may know this already, I'm sure. So ninth is one that is number nine in a series. In a series of, if I have, say, 10 things, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten things. The thing that is number nine is we say that is the ninth one, the ninth one. So here, ninth. Again, here the th, th at the end. Ninth, 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 ninth. So it's like nine with a th at the end, ninth. But then we compress that together to say ninth, ninth. An example sentence is September is the ninth month of the year. September is the ninth month of the year. So that's two words together, ninth month. So that's a good uh, vocabulary pronunciation exercise. This would say ninth month, ninth month, ninth month, ninth month, ninth month, month, ninth month. So you see we have N-I-N-T-H all together, M-O-N-T-H for month. The next word is a type of, we say animal, we call it a big cat or a wild cat. It's called a panther, panther. It's a large wild cat such as or like a leopard or jaguar, especially in a color form with black fur. So usually a panther has black fur. Its, its color is black. But it's pronounced panther, panther. So this TH sound is a little bit different than a month because month, the, the tongue is a little bit more through the teeth like this. Well, panther, the tongue is kind of behind the top teeth. The panther, the panther. Thur, panther. It's not month, th, th, it's th, th. It's very, we say it's a very subtle difference, very slight difference. Panther. We don't say panther, 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 thur. Month, month, panther, panther. But don't worry, you know, don't get, we say, too bent out of shape. That means don't get too excited or flustered or frustrated between the difference with month and panther. But panther, see, it's more like the, this, you see on my lips, panther, panther, exaggerate, like you're kissing somebody, panther. But month is month. See, my lips are open, I'm smiling, panther, I mean month, month, but panther, Panther, my lips are more closer together, where month and ninth is more, my lips are more open, I'm smiling. Month, ninth, panther, 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 thur, thur, thur. Or like the word further, I need to go further in my English studies, further, further. It's the same, this kind of formation or form of the mouth, mouth further, but ninth, panther, panther. The next word is rhythm, 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 R-H-Y-T-H-M. Rhythm is a strong, regular, repeated pattern of movement or sound. And usually we use rhythm when we're talking about music. So music has a certain rhythm or beat or flow. Like this could be a rhythm with my, I'm, I'm snapping my fingers. This is called snapping my fingers. So my fingers are snapping in a certain rhythm. Or I can clap my hands in a certain rhythm. See how the rhythm changes? So that's rhythm, that's rhythm. Thum, thum. See, the THM is thum, thum, thum. Rhythm, rhythm. But this is not really rhythm, rhythm. I can't open my mouth like anthem. Well, it's similar, I'm sorry, like anthem, but it's not like ninth. It's like rhythm. It's like anthem, anthem, rhythm. The same type of sound or formation. Rhythm, 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 rhythm. 
So it's not rhythm, thumb. It's not thumb, but thumb, rhythm, thumb. Can you hear the difference? Thumb instead of thumb. Thumb, thumb, thumb. So this is thumb, where the tongue is kind of behind these two front teeth, teeth, rhythm, rhythm, rhythm. An example sentence is, that song has a very nice and fast rhythm. The next word is synthetic, synthetic, S-Y-N-T-H-E-T-I-C, synthetic, synthetic. You hear the T-H is the, the, T-H-E, synthetic, synthetic, synthetic. And also the tongue is kind of behind the two top front teeth, 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 synthetic, synthetic which synthetic is something made of artificial material or not natural items. For example, since my car is getting older, I put synthetic oil in it now. Since my car is getting older, I put synthetic oil in it now. That's synthetic, synthe, synthe, the, synthetic, synthetic. And the last word that I'm going to go over with a definition is warmth. Warmth, W-A-R-M, like warm, with the letter T-H at the end. So warm, warm, the, the, with the, 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 warmth, or the T at the end. Th. Warmth, warmth, warmth. It's not warmth, the, warmth, no, it's warmth, 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 it's a T. Warmth, warmth, warmth. And warmth is the quality or the state or the sensation of being warm. Warm. I can feel the warmth from the heater. I can feel the warmth from the sun. Example, the fireplace gives us much needed warmth in the winter. The fireplace gives us much needed warmth in the winter, winter, warmth, warmth, warmth. So those are 12 words that I was able to find where the letters TH have the letters M, N, S, and Z uh, directly attached to them either before the TH or after the TH. But there are a lot of other words that include th together but have these other letters uh, in the word but not directly connected to the th i'm going to go over these very quickly so there's the word than t-h-a-n but it's a th th than than or the word think think t-h-a-n-k think or the word thanks thanks like thanks a lot or I want to thank you for the present. Or he is a very thankful, thankful. He's a very thankful person. So here, the word than has a different, th is pronounced a little differently than think. So than is like a the sound. Than, the, than. Instead of think is more of a th, th, th. Think is more of a th sound than a the sound. So you can hear the and the. Th, 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 or th, than. So I'll go over than, think, thanks, thankful. I see I'm still opening my mouth. Than, think, thanks, thankful. So the words that also have E in them, like the. This is the video I am making about a certain topic. The. Sometimes say the or the, either way. Um, I'm going to take the bus. Sometimes people say I'm going to take the bus, but that's not very common here. And we say the, the, T-H-E is the. There's them, T-H-E-M, them. So here the difference, the, them, 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 and the, the, them, the, themselves. And there's another word, T-H-E-M-E, -E, which is pronounced theme. Theme. So here the the theme theme instead of 
the, the. There's another word, T-H-E-N, which is then, then. Another word, T-H-E-S-E, -E, these. And another word, T-H-E-S-I-S, -S, which is thesis, thesis. So I'm going to say these words, and I'm going to have these words listed below in the comments in the video. So just follow along with me. The, them, themselves, theme, then, these, thesis, thesis. The next line is thimble, thin, thing, think, and this. So here there's a th can have different sounds. So thimble, see the th. Thimble, thin is more th, thin, thimble, thin. That's the same type of th sound. Thing, same like thing, th, thing, think. But this, see, this has a totally different sound. It's like a th, th, instead of a th. It's a th, th. It's a, it's a harder sound we say in English. This, or those, or this, this cat, this car. The next line has three words in it. It's Thomas, T-H-O-M-A-S, thong, T-H-O-N-G. It's a type of, can be a type of a shoe that people wear like to the beach or it can be type of underwear that women wear. Look that up. I'm not going to go into detail on that. Or the word those, T-H-O-S-E. So we have Thomas, which is interesting because the T-H sounds like a T sound. It's not Thomas, no, or Thomas, or Thomas. It's t Thomas. So that's very different from what you might think, Thomas. But there's thong, thong, and those, those. The next line is thumb, thump, thus, and thunder. Thumb, thump, thus, and thunder. If you need to, just rewind the video and listen to these again. The next line has words that start with M. So there's math, meth, moth, mother, mouth, and myth. Math, meth, moth, mother, mouth, and myth. So with the TH at the end, it's more like a th sound, math. But mother has a th, thur, thur sound instead of a th sound. So look, look these words up. I'm not going to go over the definitions of these. So that's going to be your homework and your practice. Because in learning English, you have to put in some effort, right, of your own. The teacher can't do everything for you. So that's what will get you hopefully motivated to learn. The next line has three words. It's neither. North and northern. Neither, it's a th sound, neither. North, but this is a th at the end, north. Or northern, but this is a thur sound, northern. So north, northern. So it's not northern, thern, it's northern, northern. So neither, north, and northern. The next line starts with word, has words that begin in S. Seth, which, which is a man's name, Seth. South and Southern. Seth, South, and Southern. So you see a pattern here. A lot of times words that end in TH is a th sound, like Seth, South. But Southern, it's a th, th, th sound. Southern, not Southern. Thern, Southern, thern. The next word is another. A-N-O-T-H-E-R. Another. Hey, I want another beer. I want another Coke. I want another glass of water. Another, there. And the last word uh, starts with Z. So there's not really hardly any words with TH and Z in the word, but a, this is called a zither. It's Z, Z. Zither, the. It's a hard TH. We say the, zither, not zither, but zither. 
And a zither is a type of stringed musical instrument, a zither, zither. So like I said, I'm going to have uh, all of these words and phrases, definitions in the description below. So follow along with me. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. It's something a little different. Like I said, it was something that was requested uh, by a viewer. And if you have a comment, question, or if you have a suggestion for a video that you would like me to make, just uh, leave me a comment in the comment section. Also leave me a comment telling me uh, if you like the video and if you have any questions about it. So I think that's going to wrap it up. Let's like come to a close or come to an end. I'm going to wrap it up on this episode of Learn Everyday English. So again, hit the like button, subscribe, and tell your friends about it. So until next time, we'll be bringing you more videos to come. So I said hopefully I'll be able to still be consistent and put out a video on average, we'll say, or about once a week here in the studio on different topics and outside uh, about different things that I do or things to see and do here in, uh, in Texas and in the U.S. So again, that's enough for now. I'm not going to go on and on and on, but I uh, hope you enjoyed the video again and um, keep listening. We'll see you next time on Learn Everyday English. Hey, goodbye.